In terms of perforated peptic ulcer, what is the most likely diagnosed in a 45-year-old male patient presented with abdominal pain uh, uh, and peritonitis? An examination is background of osteoarthritis and NSAIDs takes NSAIDs as well. So, What's your uh, most likely diagnosis? The likely diagnosis is the ruptured viscous due to a perforated uh, peptic ulcer. Yeah, and, and why do you think this is the most likely diagnosis? Uh, as the patient is taking uh, non-steroidals, uh, which is a main risk factor for uh, peptic ulcer disease. Yeah, so you want to answer the question, like you want to give me an explanation. Uh, I think the most likely diagnosis is perforated peptic ulcer, given that the patient takes NSAIDs, which does increase the risk of that, of gastritis, which can turn into and so on. All right. All right, what's the commonest finding on the full? What's the comment in the finding on the following x ray? What's the most important finding here? So uh, I can see air on the diaphragm, which uh, denotes uh, ruptured viscous, mainly due to perforated. Okay. So what are the risk factors of perforation? Um, uh, it's non steroidal anti inflammatory disease or uh, uh, and, and non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs and uh, the H. pylori and uh, smoking and steroids. Yeah, and spirits, right? Yeah. Uh, alcohol as well can lead to that, and malignancy, of course, is a different one. All right, how can NSAIDs cause peptic ulcer then? Um, okay, so uh, the NSAIDs are uh, one of the COX inhibitor, which uh, they, they inhibit the COX enzy enzyme, which will end up in inhibition of the prostaglandin synthesis, which is uh, protective to the stomach mucosa, which can lead to uh, uh, peptic ulcers and gastritis. I think you're, you're right, but I'm, I'm quite unhappy with the answer. It's a little bit short. You need to sort of give me a little bit more about the path of physiology or sort of how the wall is formed, okay? So basically, you have a sort of a mucosal effect. So as you can see here, the wall is formed from the epithelium. Mm -hmm. And then you have a pH of 7.4. You will have the hydrogen gradient down there. And then the acid pH of the stomach is 1 to 2. So you can see there is acid here was 1 to 2. And then pH is 7.4, very close to the cell. All right. So the pre-epithelial is very acidic, but the epithelial is actually alkalotic. And then you have lots of blood supply coming to supply this area, okay? And you have uh, also the um, sort of, um, you know, all these inflammatory cells, but the key part here, lots of blood supply that give lots of nutrients and also take the waste away from it, okay? So what happened is for the NSAIDs, when NSAIDs come to play here, this mucosal barrier, which is 7.4, will be completely disrupted, all right? The, the, the NSAIDs itself are typically irritant to the epithelium after disrupting it, it will be very irritant to the epithelium. It will delay the healing when it leads to an injury, okay? And it will cause vasoconstriction to decrease the vascular flow and consequently will decrease, you know, the uh, ability to heal as well, all right? And um, yeah, so and all of this happened from, uh, uh, you know, prostaglandin uh, synthesis and inhibition of cytooxygenase. I think you started very well, but I would say, you know, the steps, you know, uh, so you, I will be able to read your mind that, you know, there is one mucosal barrier, two, some cells that have high chance to repair, three, some blood vessels, but the aspirin work on all of this all together to prevent it from healing, okay? What's the, what are the management options here for this patient with perforated peptic ulcer being or NSAIDs? Okay, uh, we're talking about the intraoperative management, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it will be omental patch repair and taking a biopsy as well from the peptic ulcer to rule out malignancy. Yeah, so you're talking about operative management here, like we said. So omental patch repair, good for inherited intraoperative drain and then biopsy as well. Well done. What's the post-operative medications to give? Uh, Long-term proton pump inhibitors. What's the mechanism of action of PPIs? Uh, okay, the proton pump inhibitors, they inhibit the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump, uh, which, um, okay, so the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump, so it will produce hydrogen, which will form uh, hydrogen chloride, uh, which will be a 
protective mucosal barrier and acidic medium. So they will make the, the medium slightly alkalotic, I think, by inhibition of that pump. Yeah, so, 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 but you want to say, you want to say directly that it irreversibly binds to hydrogen potassium ATP. Uh, mm -hmm. gate uh, parietal cells and yeah I think you're right in the second part it will prevent secretion of hydrogen and will make the area less acidic okay what what are the actions of HCl um, I think it will activate the gas chain release lots uh, of things lots of things there are other things as well okay so uh, I think it's 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 mainly the will form the acidic medium of the stomach and will uh, induce gastrin release and um, or else I think it has something to do with the iron. Um, I can't recall it. Sorry. That's fine. So it, one, it's antimicrobial. Activate the pepsinogen enzyme as well uh, to pepsin and then stimulate the small intestinal oh. mucosa. To produce the cholecystokinin and secretin, and also promote absorption of calcium and iron into the small intestine as well. What are the phases of gastric acid secretion? Okay, uh, there are three phases: the cephalic phase, the gastric phase, the intestinal phase. So uh, the cephalic uh, phase will uh, just start uh, once the f I mean the food is in the mouth, um, and uh, the gastric phase will uh, produce the gastric en enzymes. While the uh, intestinal phase is the last phase, uh, where the secretin and the cholecystokinin are the cholecystokinin are released. Yeah. Okay. So tell me what's the NC pod classification? Okay. So the NC pod classification is a classification for the for the surgeries uh, depending on the. Just tell me. Um, tell me the NC pod. Tell me what what is what is NC pod one. Uh, okay, so it's the um, National Confidential Inquiries of uh, Patient Outcome and Death. And uh, just listen, what is no. NC Port 1? Just, just tell me, what is oh. NC Port 1? Okay, it, it, it will be uh, urgent, urgent surgeries, uh, life saving surgeries, immediate life saving surgeries. What is that? What is that? Uh, uh, th that will be either limb saving or life saving surgeries. That's what I want to hear. So, yeah. Cat one or category one, life okay. or limb saving, mm -hmm. life or limb saving, such as acute limb ischemia, and anything that could be life saving, they ruptured. Yeah, it's ruptured. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What is cat two? Category two. It's an uh, uh, like ur urgent surgeries, like uh, that needs to be done within a few hours, like the perforated uh, duodenal ulcer. Amazing, right? So perforated ISO also is one of them as well. Okay, but it, it, it not necessarily within hours. You need to do a daytime or out of our emergency list, mm -hmm. right? So basically, this 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 NC port thing is a communication with your anesthetic colleague, right? Okay. So when you start working and you will have a patient with, uh, if you're working in vascular surgery, you have acute limb ischemia, or we can a neurosurgery and you have a patient with acute hydrocephalus or compartment syndrome, anything like that. And the anesthetist is saying, well, I can't really do the anesthesia now. I'm currently busy. This doesn't need to happen out of hours. What you need to say, I'm sorry, this is category one. Patient needs to go on now to theater. When you say category one, they have to go to theater. Yeah. There is no there is no argument, right? The, nobody's going to argue with you, right? So this is just a, to make the communication easier between yourself and the 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 anesthetic. So cat two, cat two, it comes to to talk about the uh, um, you know it can happen out of hours as an emergency surgery, right? Mm -hmm. So perforated appendix or perforated peptic ulcer or perforated you know any perforation of viscous, yes, it needs to happen out of hours, out of mm -hmm. hours as an emergency. So if you have an appendix that's perforated, came overnight, it will need to happen overnight. It can't wait till the morning. All right, mm -hmm. fine. Uh, next, um, you know, and also tendon and nerve injury can happen as well as, sorry, uh, the compound fractures and the critical limb ischemia, you can argue that it could be category two, but actually uh, critical limb ischemia, I would keep it with 
category one as well. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, what is CAT three? So it will be the expedited surgeries that can be done in the nearest list, like tendon or nerve injury. Yep. And what is CAT four? That would be for the elective surgeries. Like yeah, the elective surgeries. Right? These are exactly these are the categories or triple area repair, unruptured triple area repair, right? Unruptured right. triple area repair. Okay. Or any tumor, right? Any tumor is an elective operation. Okay. Well done. So NC pod. Okay. I'm going to ask you another question from the communication. You're trying to refer the patient with acute limb ischemia to the uh, uh, registrar in another hospital, and they're saying to you, "Can this wait till the morning?" What's what are you going to answer? How are you going to answer this question? Uh, so I think the critical limb ischemia is a an immediate uh, surgery, a CAT one surgery, so it can't be delayed till the morning. I think it needs Correct. To be so 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 yeah. So you want to say that to them? So uh, um, I asked you this question here because the students tend to forget it, all right? So when you go to that, you will keep saying, well, it's a critical limb ischemia, it's relatively urgent, and you need to take the case. No, I want to hear that you're aware of the NC pod. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a critical limb ischemia. I feel like this NC pod category one, I will definitely discuss it with my consultant. However, I think that this patient needs to go urgently to the theater to save their limb because it's a category one NC pod. Perfect, all right? Okay.